Greetings, brothers and sisters of the Discalced Carmelite Secular Order and to those of you who are interested in the vocation of the Discalced Carmelite Secular Order. It is a pleasure to share this time with you. I received a comment on one of the other videos and the person who made the comment thanked me for the video but said, would you please smile? Uh, I thought to myself, when, I remember when I was a boy, when I was seven years old, I fell and I cracked my front tooth so that my big tooth was in half, not ha up and down this way, not this way, but this way. So it made me very self-conscious because I never smiled. I had this big gap in my mouth and the other show. So I learned how to smile without smiling. So I've been smiling the whole time. Just haven't been able to see it. Anyway, we've been talking about a number of things which I found from my experience. I was for 24 years associated with the Secretariat for the Secular Order. As a matter of fact, I was the one who, Father Camilo Maxiste, who was a great visionary, a great leader of the order, I was one that he chose to open the first de secretariat dedicated exclusively to the secular order in the general house because of the importance that the church has been giving to changes in the nature of the church. And so I've been associated and I wandered around the world for 15 years, otherwise I was the general secretary at Universally, and then for another uh, nine years I was uh, secretary for the Secular Order of Asia and Oceania. And I've been sharing, I shared, those, after 12 years, I shared those experiences in a book, a little book that was published by ICS in Washington, D.C., called Welcome to the Secular Order of the Discalced Carmelites. And what I shared were what I thought were fundamental things that help in identifying um, the vocation, discerning the vocation, identifying the person who in their development of their following the Lord, the call to the Lord, identify with the secular order. And, and, and what I call the profile of the secular order, I reduced to or identified in six separate areas that fortunately in English it works to, to use the letter M for each of those areas. And we've been talking about the six M's. First one, meditation. Second one, morning prayer, evening prayer, night prayer. Third one, mass. Fourth one, Mary. Fifth one, meetings. And we spent a lot of time talking about meetings and why meetings are important. And the sixth one, fortunately, I have the word in English, the, the word is mission. The mission of the Discalced Carmelite Secular Order member. Now, I prefer the word mission, for, for, fortunately, because of the letter M, I use the word mission. But the other word that's closely associated with mission in which well, 19 years ago, when the Constitutions first came out, caused a bit of reaction, was the word apostolate. And I, I preferred the word mission to using the word apostolate because there's a, there's a wider meaning and understanding. it, And it's, people were afraid of the word apostolate. Oh, I got some, when the first we started to talk about this and started talking about the Constitutions, and uh, there were people who had very bad reactions to the word apostolate and thought I was, um, Father Camilo or that by myself, that we were trying to turn people into teachers or, or missionaries and leaving their family and leaving their work. And uh, there was very, very extreme reactions to the idea of apostolate. But it was not, it doesn't come from the order. This came, from this came from changes that took place in the identity of the lay person in the church. The, do the document of the Second Vatican Council on the laity is apostolicam actuositatem. 
apostolic activity. The, the, the document for religious was not about apostolic activity. The document for priests was not about apostolic activity. We make, we contribute, whether as religious or as priests, we contribute to the sanctity and the growth and the maturity of the lay person. But it's the lay person that changes the world. We have a specific role as religious. Priests have a specific role as priests, and lay people have a specific role as lay people. And it was identified as apostolicum actuositate, apostolic activity. That was in 1964-65, that document. As a result of that document, the, 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 the legislation of the secular order changed, and the rule of life was written in 1974, approved in 1974, and that became uh, the first step into a new way of understanding the purpose of the vocation of the secular order member. The other legislation, the legislation that preceded the rule of life, came in 1974, the other legislation was written in 1922, and that legislation from 1922 um, was in a little book called The Manual. And it consisted mostly of customs and, and, and learning prayers and, and very pious, and fundamentally good pious, good piety, solid piety. Um, I mean, that was the way lay people understood, understood their vocation. Then there was a synod in uh, 1983. It was a synod on the 1982, there was a synod in 1982, synod on the lay people, on the laity. And 1983, St. John Paul II, as Pope, wrote an apostolic constitution, apostolic letter, apostolic letter, Christi Fidelis Laici, on the, on the, on the um, Christ's faithful people. And in that, he developed a whole theology of communio communion and a whole understanding of, of uh, the activity, the activity that's necessary for lay people in the church. Now, let's be clear. I am not talking about, there's no sense to this, to this understanding of the role of the lay person in the church, the mission of the lay person in the church. There's no sense of understanding that it's radical change of life. Yeah, there's no abandonment of the family, there's no abandonment of the work obligations in order to be a faithful member of the Discalc Scrumite Secular Order with a mission in the church. But we have to understand that something changes. And so <clears throat> the sixth M is mission. Now we have to understand this first in the first in the first category in the most Fundamental category, we have to understand this in a spiritual sense. Then we understand it in, a, in an actual sense. The actual sense comes from the spiritual sense of the word mission. The reason why God calls us, discuss Carmelites, friars, nuns, seculars, the reason why God calls us to be Carmelites is so that we know him. But the reason he wants us to know him is because he wants others to know him through us. Remember this, please. To be a Carmelite is not a privilege. To be a Carmelite is a responsibility. And the responsibility is for the conversion of the world. We do this by praying. There's a fund the fundamental apostolate of the nuns is to pray. We do this by praying. We do this in our family lives. That's the first place where any discalced Carmelite secular or member has a mission. To, to, to sanctify the home that they, they live in with the people that they live in. 
not by being preaching, not by insisting on any kind of uh, change of uh, function in the family, but by simply witnessing to the values that come to us through our experience of prayer. God wants us to know him so that others know him. It's not a privilege for us. If, 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 if the only purpose of being a discalced Carmelite is to know God so that I become holy, then I do not need a community, I do not need an order, I do not need a, a, a structure around me. God has called me, I'm privileged. But we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility in the first place to the people as, as Carmelites, members of religious community. Well, our first responsibility is to the community that we live in. And the first responsibility for a secular is the family that they live in. If they work in a workplace, they contribute by the, the, their mission in changing the world by the way they participate in the obligations of work, the way they get along with it. There's, there's, there's countless opportunities in which your Christian, Catholic, Carmelite identity can help you in the workplace to be tolerant, responsible, forgiving, friendly. There's countless ways in which our Carmelite spirituality helps us to, to, to in, the, in the surroundings we live in. In chapter 41 of the Way of Perfection, St. Teresa uses an expression which I remember in Spanish. Esto tiene with the, uh, tanto más santas, más conversables. The holier a person is, the more sociable they are. There's the St. Teresa, the great contemplative, uh, the one who climbed the highest of the experiences in the mansions, to, to the seventh mansions, to the seven, almost the seventh heaven. Santo más santas. The holier the sisters are, the more sociable they are. That applies to every Carmelite. There's a, the, 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 the world needs to be sanctified, made holy. It's, it's, it's done by blessing. It's done by prayer. But it's done by presence. I am a Carmelite religious. I live in a community, a, a mendicant community. I have a postulate to do. I am a contemplative. I, I must, it's very, it sounds very bold to say that, but I've call, I'm called to be a contemplative. I'm called to live in a mendicant community and I'm called to be of service to the people of the church. The nuns are called to live in a community a cloistered community, different than ours, cloistered, cut off from the world, separated. They're called to be contemplative. And they're called to witness. Their lives witness by the separation. I don't have a vocation to be a nun. And the nun does not have a vocation to be a mendicant friar. And the nun and the mendicant friar do not have a vocation to be a lay person in the church. It used to be, as, you remember, as some of you remember, although the older I get, the less people there are, who are around who remember this. But there used to be first order and second order and third order. First order were the holy priests, the second order were the holier nuns, and the fourth, the third order were the lay people. You have a wonderful vocation. Now, I, I'm just beginning this subject. I've spoken now 15 or 16 minutes. I'm just beginning the subject on the mission in the church. And the mission is, is the last part of the six M. The last part of the six M's is the mission, and that's in chapter two of this book. But chapter three begins another chapter, and the, uh, the other chapter is a new vision, apostolate of our charism. So I will be covering the, uh, the end of chapter two and then all we do in chapter three so that we can understand clearly what is something new about our identity as Christ. Yes, we are all called to prayer. And we are called to prayer, vocal prayer, mental prayer. 
We're told to pray to, to help to bless the world and save the world. We're called to prayer, especially through meditation, and through the attempts that we make of, of learning to meditate. We're called to know, experience the knowledge of God. And thirdly, new, we're called, the seculars are called, to share their experience of the identity as a discalced Carmelite with the world so that the world will know God. So we'll continue with this next week and maybe the week after that, or the next video, the video after that. This is video number 23 in this series on the OCDS. As I've mentioned before, when I finish this book, I will then go through the Constitution since I was part of the authorship of the Constitutions. Um, uh, so we'll go through the Constitutions beginning with number one up until number 60. Um, to be able to discuss, like maybe explain some points, points of law, points of catechism. Um, so that's the future. So hang around, participate. If you want to, please subscribe to this video. Don't forget, ring the little, click on the little bell so you can control the notification of about the new videos. Um, and uh, hit like or make any comment that can help to make these videos more fruitful. They are not intended to take the place of formation. They're, they're intended to help, from my perspective as much as I can do, to help the Second Order member be um, truly happy and faithful in their vocation. I'm making this video in my new my new assignment, which is Jogjakarta. Um, I moved from Java, where I was very happy, to Jogjakarta, where I will be very happy. And I'm making this video. I'm the first video in this brand new audio-visual room. That thanks be to God, through a, uh, a benefactor, we were able to build. Our brothers here in Jogjakarta. Uh, made marvelous videos on Carmelite spirituality and on the spirituality of Carmel. Uh, they're all in Bahasa Indonesia, but the Carmel Tube or Carmelite, L-I-G-H-T. Um, so uh, thanks be to God for the generosity of people who are able to help us. God bless you and thank you for taking the opportunity to spend some time here.